for an unknown duration of time prior to its assumed destruction during the Clone Wars, about 25 BBY. The Kyber Memory Crystal was used to plot the locations of all the galaxy's Force-sensitive beings from the time of their conception and birth and on, at least, into their early formative age of maturation. The Kyber Memory Crystal, plugged into the proper holocron, was where the journey for most Force-sensitive newborns would begin. The Jedi actively sought out all young children who displayed gifts for using the Force or who displayed aptitude in being trained in the ways of the Jedi arts. He has special powers. Yes. He can see things before they happen. That's why he appears to have such quick reflexes. It's a Jedi trait. The second step toward identifying the aptitude for testing and initiation into the Jedi Order came in the form of testing the midichlorian count in the candidate's blood cells. The midichlorian count of their blood cells would allow a Jedi recruiter an approximation of the newborn's potential for development of their use of the Force. For example, around 900 BBY, when he was first discovered, then still infant Yoda was found to have a higher midichlorian count than any Jedi known to have gone before him. His training was thus of great importance to the Jedi Order and his contributions to it as a master and eventually Grand Master of the Jedi Council were equally reciprocal. He went on to train thousands of younglings and mastered dozens of Padawans into Jedi Knights including most notably Mace Windu, who would serve under Yoda as the master of the Jedi Council during the Clone Wars until his assassination commenced the Jedi Purge some 20 BBY. Throughout the 1,000 years, from the Reformation of Rusan until the Galactic Imperial New Order, only 20 Jedi in this way initiated into the Order chose to leave. The last of these lost twenty prior to the beginning of the Clone Wars was Count Dooku of Sereno, another Padawan of Grand Master Yoda. Of all the Jedi trained during that time, even of those others who broke their commitment to the Jedi Order, he alone turned to the ways of the dark side and allied himself with the Jedi's sworn enemies the evil Sith. Following a period of time spent with their parents during their formative toddler age, a Jedi Minder would come to the family of a Force-sensitive youngling to request they allow their child be trained by the Jedi. Children collected in this way by Minders were then removed from their parents' care into the trust of the Order and taken with the Jedi Minder for training to become a Knight of the Galactic Republic in the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. Immediately confronted upon arrival by the impressive ziggurat and spires of the Jedi Temple, Force-sensitive younglings taken thus as initiates for training in the arts of the Jedi Order began their formative youth age as students of the Force, initiates of the Jedi Order. Aside from the entrance to the holocron vault, allowed only for masters, a Jedi initiate was granted access to all the countless data stored in its shelves and to the busts of the Lost Twenty in the Jedi archives. However, before being allowed to begin their studies of all its vast topics of knowledge and to advance in their development of personal skills using the Force, Youngling initiates were first taught the core principles of the Jedi Order. Following, of course, the Jedi Codes of Honor and Conduct, a new initiate Jedi learned the three principles of the Order and their three methods for use of the Force. The core tenets of the Jedi Order were established as the three pillars. One, the Force. 2. 
knowledge, and three, self-discipline. The three pillars corresponded to the three methods of using the Force for a Jedi Knight. One, inner control. Two, external sense. And three, alter or choose. However, for a new initiate into the Order, the three pillars were more immediately signified by the three roles they could come to serve in the Jedi Order based on their passage or failure of three initiate trial tests. If the new initiate passed the first initiate trial test, that of their knowledge of the Jedi Code, they were considered merely a Force-sensitive layperson. If they could pass the second test, that of their ability to use the Force to build and wield a lightsaber, then the youngling could progress into the Jedi Service Corps, however would likely end up serving in it and not being selected as a Padawan. If they passed the third test, that of making a certain and profoundly self-influencing moral choice to do good and to conquer the dark side, a youngling initiate would very likely be selected to become the Padawan apprentice of an actively serving Jedi Knight. During the period of their first initiate trial, a youngling is observed while being allowed to learn freely from almost everything, the Jedi Temple on Coruscant, and later the Yavin 4 Praxium Academy of Luke Skywalker's New Jedi Order, had to offer to a curious youngling. They were given numerous toys, tools, and even simulacra of weapons, and encouraged to play with them and learn how to use them to their advantage. They were also encouraged to begin doing what all Jedi are eventually encouraged to do, and that is to teach others what you have learned. The more apt a youngling's skills in applying these methods of learning and leadership, the more likely they would be to learn from the Jedi Code. But even at this stage, the very young student still might be dismissed as a lay person. The first trial of a Jedi Initiate is to memorize the Jedi Code, and it is said that no one who has not done so may be allowed to become a Jedi. During the period of their second initiate trial, a youngling is encouraged to meditate on how to use the Force. This phase of their early adolescent development is spent by candidates choosing to pursue the Jedi arts in self-absorbing contemplation on the nature and will of the Force, and sometimes years are spent by a student grappling with a full understanding of their own abilities and the importance of their choices before being chosen to become a Jedi Padawan learner. Those students who excel during this stage of their Jedi training are chosen for the Jedi Service Corps and allowed to serve in most functionary positions peripheral to the daily duties of the Jedi Order. The second initiate trial comes in the form of testing one's ability to use the Force to construct and wield a lightsaber and it is said that no one who has not done so may be allowed to become a Jedi Padawan. During the period of their training in the Jedi Service Corps, younglings have the privilege of being taught in classes by the Grand Master of the Order themselves. During these classes, youngling students in the Service Corps were taught how to further control, sense, and alter using the Force by performing simple exercises combining use of their minds and their bodies. Their maturing bodies thus would become more attuned to using the Force while applying also the desire for advancement and skill level in the Jedi arts. Usually during the nearly 1,000 years between the Rusan reforms and the Clone Wars, this training would involve how to wield a snub-length, laser-bladed short saber while their usual cognitive sensory processes were being confused, distracted, or otherwise prevented from their normal use and functioning. If a Jedi in the Jedi Service Corps showed particular aptitude to their teacher, the Order's Grand Master, 
That student was brought before the council for the third and final initiate trial to determine whether or not they would be allowed to become a Padawan apprentice to a Jedi Knight. I take Anakin as my Padawan learner. An apprentice you have, Qui-Gon. Impossible to take out a second. The code forbids it. Once a young initiate in the Jedi Service Corps is chosen by the Council to be trained as a Padawan apprentice, the Council appoints the new Padawan to their new instructor, a Jedi Knight, whose teacher-student relationship with them will form memory bonds lasting the Padawan's entire life. The Padawan learner is given the standard robes of their rank, essentially a simple guard including a utility belt with a hilt for their own personally constructed lightsaber, as well as the traditional Jedi robe, an equally simple brown robe with long sleeves, a hood, and reaching in length to the ground. The Padawan also wears the single braided strand of their rank as a symbol of how long they have served as an apprentice to a knight in the Jedi Order. The longer their Padawan braid, the longer their time as a Padawan. Because of the process of selection by the Council of Reassignment, a Padawan could range in age from the very young to the very old in their physical appearance, although all were deemed equal in the level of their development of skills in using the Force and learning the Jedi arts. Because the Jedi Council offered advice to and followed all orders given by the Galactic Senate and its Grand Chancellor, often the Jedi Knights of the Republic who were apprenticing Padawans would be sent out on a mission by the Council to serve the will of the Galactic Republic. On these missions, more often than not, a Padawan would find themselves staring down death and fighting for their own life side by side with their master knight. Because the missions of the knights who were allowed to master Padawans were so often dangerous, the council was almost never lenient in its choice of service corps members to become Padawans.